Hello and welcome to yet another episode with me, Miss Envy, while we explore all things weird and algorithmy. Yes, I'm I'm saying, come share my algorithm with me. <laughs> Go grab something nice to drink, put up your feet and enjoy our first video. Uh, have you ever recorded yourself on a voice note and then listened to it afterwards and went, eh? Check it out. Listen, man, I hear you've been trying to hit on my wife in the gym. If I ever catch you doing something like that again, it's done for. Don't test me. Listen here for me, you Aries, man. If you try to carfoofle with my wife one more time in the gym, it's going to be over for. Okay, don't test for me. I'm the cocky, slimmest person you are ever to meet. I'll drop for you like an Otani Openati. <laughs> yep, yep. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. <laughs> okay, here's a pretty interesting video about water there is so much that we don't know about water and um something that i've learned is water carries memory this guy explains it nicely water is a liquid crystal and it stores information from its source to its final destination it never forgets anything that happened to it and unfortunately most of what has happened to water is negative pollution negative energies so we have to do something to erase these bad memories out of the water by various means you can put your intention into it like masaru emoto says put love compassion into your glass of water and drink it and it will have changed from a negative to a positive. That's why intentions, every day send out loving intentions across the planet, they go out to infinity. So here's an interesting fact that I didn't know until like the other day. There is only a set amount of water on this planet. It's not like we receive more water from space, which is what I used to think. <laughs> so that means that all the water that's available, drinking water, I mean, all the water that's available to us has been circulated through human beings and and all other living beings since the dawn of time so it kind of makes sense that it would carry memory okay for the next video uh, let's just say this video is me navigating life I'm sure a lot of you can relate dude stop your cuck <laughs> I'm just trying to live here just let me live all right uh, question have you ever been in traffic and wondered why you never see any celebrities stuck in traffic alongside you this might explain it your NDA is expired and you could talk about this you used to work at a secret Starbucks is that yeah. right yeah there is a Starbucks that is like above reserve like a Starbucks no one's ever heard of or been to all right, have you ever wondered while driving in Los Angeles, how come you've never seen like Will Smith stuck in traffic on the 405? Yeah. I've never seen a one percenter just in their car stuck in traffic. Why is that? That's because there's a series of intricate tunnels underneath Los Angeles known as the actor bond. I'm not kidding. Like they get access points to move through the city without ever having to be in traffic. You can come up in LAX, you can pop up at Dodger Stadium, underneath there in those tunnels is Starbucks's set up at different locations to allow them to get coffees while they're driving. Who's all of them? them? Seinfeld. You've Oprah, seen Seinfeld down there? Bono. I've seen Seinfeld down there. <laughs> Dude, almond milk latte, two shots. Wow. Yeah. Was he a good tipper? They don't have to pay. So, so this has been underneath los angeles for a few years now i mean how long has this been there for i mean it, it predates me if you I, I it seems like the city was built on top of it so i, I mean i wow. think this goes all the way back to the 20s that this doesn't seem real almost this is crazy i i imagine how i sound saying it to people so this guy signed an nda not to talk about his work working at the starbucks's 
underneath the cities. This guy just basically described that there's a whole life underground that we aren't aware of. I don't know, man. If I signed an NDA and it expired and I was allowed to talk, I don't think I'd talk, eh? Because, <laughs> you know, you might just suddenly pass away from something weird. All right, so here's some food for thought with the next video. I really thought it was beautiful. I'm busy learning Chinese and how to write Chinese, but the words behind this are just stunning. Enjoy. And someday you'll realize that the life you thought you wanted is far different from the life that will actually make your soul come alive. Someday you'll realize that your picture of what you want is really just a reflection of what the world has told you to want and that there is actually so much more out there for you. Someday you'll realize that many things you once wanted you didn't really want and you'll start listening to your soul about what you truly desire in this life. Someday you'll realize that the life truly meant for you is more beautiful, deep, simple, profound and miraculous than you could dream. Ooh, I just get goosebumps when I hear that. It's just beautiful. And the visuals, definitely something not to look away, look away from. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> As you can see, um, I'm here to tell you about some alien activity on the way. According to the James Webb Telescope, we have aliens heading towards Earth. They saying it, not me. Let's check it out. Did you guys hear what the James Webb Telescope just discovered? No. They said we have alien ships heading towards Earth at light speed. Okay, what? They are the size of cities. And the only reason they're calling them alien ships is because they're on this one trajectory and then turned towards Earth. How far away are they? The predictions range from a couple of years to a couple of weeks. They got images of it going and then it course corrected towards Earth. So that's the only reason they're calling them ships. I'm on Snopes. All it says is unfounded, so they're not saying it's not true. Why would James Webb Telescope lie? You know James Webb. <laughs> dude, don't get me started on Mr. Webb. He's dude. notorious for always just having the coolest story. Pathological liar, that guy. Guys, those alien ships heading towards us and they're the size of cities? <laughs> and they're heading at us at the speed of white? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, am I seeing what I think I see? <laughs> You're not going to believe James, this. James, there's nothing there. <laughs> it's an alien mothership. They're flying that way. Oh, who cares? They just turned. <laughs> they headed white toward us. Okay, we'll believe you. Well, there's a theory that they've always been here. Just a theory. Okay, so the next video is all about making your own probiotics at home. And so something, there's something rustic and uh, I don't know, there's something just so wholesome about this video. There you go, it's wholesome. It's. I'm going to find the recipe eventually, hopefully in a video and I'll, I'll post it in another episode. But take a look at this, pay attention and know that gut health is mental health. I, th I think I might have even said it in a previous video, but I really, really mean it. All these things you guys, you see on Instagram, all this collagen and colostrum and probiotics, it's pretty much all just gimmicky bullshit. Your sauerkraut that you made with your bare hands in your kitchen on your wooden cutting board with the bacteria that you live around, that you ferment on your countertop is a bazillion times better than any stupid probiotic you could take in a plastic bottle. It's true. Um, the same theory goes for honey. There's no point in having honey from an area that you're not living in. The um, antihistamine properties of the honey is more likely to benefit you if you get honey from your area. And I kind of get the same vibe here. Make your own probiotic sauerkraut with your own chopping board, your own bacteria in your own environment. Somehow those two in my brain just connect. Anyway, for the next video, some of you out there know more about wolves than I do. If you can comment below what you think this is about, I would love that. But it's fascinating. It grabbed my attention and I kind of get the feeling something's going on on a planetary scale. And the uh, it's not the first video I've seen where animals are communicating that something's coming. Yo. What's up? What y'all doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, something's going on. Y yeah. Don't have anything else to say to that. So if anybody can enlighten us, please do. Okay, a friend of mine and I have been discussing on and off for over a couple of years now that 
there's a possibility our hair has more functions and purpose than we realize. It's not just there to trap heat, to give us warmth, that there's actually more to it on a spiritual level. Uh, it makes me think of that Bible story. Uh, is it Samson? One of those guys, powerful dude, had long hair, and when they cut his hair, he lost all his power. So, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Have a look. Listen. I don't know the credentials credentials of this guy, what he's qualified in, but it's interesting nonetheless. Take from it what what resonates. Your crown, the Bible call it our glory. Uh, your hair is a basically an extension of your nervous system. When uh, you first born or when you first conceived in your mother's womb, uh, you have something called the endoderm, the ectoderm, and the endoderm. Mm. These things is what literally creates the fetus or the embryo inside of the woman's womb. Mm -hmm. Well, your hair is made from the same skin as your brain, mm. and your brain is made from the same thing as your skin. So your mm. hair, your, your skin, skin, and your, your brain, brain is all made from the same cellular tissue mm. called the ectoderm. From there, your eyes come forth, everything. Your third eye come from these same things. So when you get into embryology and you look at holistic healing, your hair is an extension of your nervous system, so your hair is a part of your brain. Your hair is used for, not only your hair is a part of your detoxification system too, because your hair is used as an odor system. That's why if you sweat, you sweat from your hair, or if you stink, you smell it, it, it all comes through your hair. But not only that, your hair scans the environment through something called the Merkel's disc that sits in the inner derma of, the inner derma of your skin. And what this does is it scans the environment and it tells the proteins how to associate themselves and how to, how to congregate themselves amongst you for you can actually uh, uh, experience mm. reality different. That's why if you see something that touches you spiritually, they say the hairs on my skin is starting to rise. Yeah. That's how they take, man, this is spiritual. Yeah, wow. Do you see that? Because your hair is scanning the environment and you're, so, getting, you're, getting, you're getting different spectrums of this light cold frequency so the hair on your skin does stand up. Or if you get stressed out and you're depressed, your hair starts to what? Fall out. Mm. Or if you're happy and you're, in a, and you're in a state of homeostasis, your hair starts to grow. They even got certain different types of practices and medicines where they can check your hair to see how healthy you are, see if you're stressed out. They can check your hair to see if you've been smoking drugs, you've been smoking pot. Your hair is everything because your hair is connected to every nerve ending in your body. You only <clears throat> don't have hair on the outside of your body, but you have trillions and trillions of hairs on the inside of your body. Mm -hmm. You hear vibrations and see light by way of air, your hair. You have something here called sounds like here. Yeah, it yeah. sounds the same. Yeah, facts. But you have yeah. that's you have hair inside your eardrums that make you hear. When you hear vibrations, it goes against the hair. The hair do this, connect with water, and then you decode this vibration and this light, and you say, "I'm hearing a tone," or it's "I'm powerful. hearing." Yeah, same thing with the cones in your eye. You're seeing the reflection of hair. The hair takes that image, turns it. What do you mean? I'm seeing the reflections of hair. What do you mean? So, so your hair, so nerve endings. Yeah, you got these nerve endings in your eye. And, and inside the cones, at the end of the cones, inside your irises, you have these little fibers that you call hair. Mm -hmm. This then takes the image of way of light and it converts that light into a picture. The picture shows upside down from in, in, the, cere uh, in the cerebellum in the back of your brain and then it turns itself right side out and then you see. Mm -hmm. That's your projection, but that's all by way of hair. Mm. Your tongue. Mm. You have over a billion hair. On your tongue? Yeah, on your tongue, right now. You got right hair now. on the top of your tongue. That's what they call these, taste buds. <laughs> Call taste taste buds is here. Hold on, to move your food through your digestive tract. That's, that's what's moving it. Hair. They call it the micro what? Villi. Oh, mm. your, your lungs. How you breathe and filter the air in and out of your lungs. Guess what that's by? Hair. Mm. So, so we have hair on the outside of our body and hair on the inside of our body because hair is connected to the nervous system. Hair is the nervous system and hair scans the environment and it tells you how to interact with your environment. Two questions real quick. So have you noticed that some indigenous tribes like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the Hopi Indians, they don't cut their hair. Even the men, they know something. Okay, so for the next video, have you ever trained your dog or seen videos of your dog going to the fridge and bringing you a beer or bringing the remote? Okay, technology has taken it to another level, to another level.
Right. Quickly, let me go click Amazon, add to cart. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> right. Speaking of innovation in technology, last Sunday, mankind took another big step uh, in terms of space exploration through Elon Musk. Uh, his latest achievement with SpaceX saw the successful use of chopstick robotic arms to catch and launch a rocket marking a groundbreaking step in reusable space technology. It's a pretty big deal. It's a short clip. It shows you exactly what you need to see in terms of the uh, chopstick technology. You'll see what, what that means in the video. And yeah, enjoy it. That's our last clip for the day. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> Right, that's pretty cool. My daughter and I are big fans of sushi, so the only way I got her to watch was to tell her that they were landing a rocket with chopsticks. <laughs> so I said, hey, the sushi has landed. <laughs> anyway, okay. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks so much for joining me again. I hope you enjoyed what the algorithm had to share with this week with us, with you, with me. Yeah, and uh, until next time, goodbye.